Hey, Dr. C here with you. I get a lot of questions about sea vegetables and they go along the lines of like, well, if I want to control my iodine intake, what about the fact that they contain many nutrients and they're concerned about missing out on nutrients? So let's just talk about them in general and what are some ones to consider and some options and benefits and drawbacks and how it all fits into a healthy diet and for general health as well as good thyroid function. So for starters, we're talking about plants that are used for culinary purposes that grow in the ocean. Uh, sea vegetables, sea weeds, same thing. You know, weed sounds more derogatory, but historically, these have been used for foods for quite some time by cultures that had sea-faring access, uh, especially the Japanese, the Irish, the Celts. They often had a fair amount of sea vegetables in their diet, so not, not uncommon. And we've had some data about just how they affect general overall human health. And culinary purposes, they are, you know, a nice source of the umami flavor, that salty, savory flavor. That's the perk about them. Now, a subset of those are the algae, and this includes spirulina and chlorella. The spirulina, I'm seeing more mixed data about that, possibly having effects as a neurotoxin. If you look at the floss aquae organism itself, and you look in the medical databases, you find a lot of studies about how it's grown in ponds and made cows sick. <laughs> That's the bulk of the research on that. And there's now evidence arguing that human forms of it, it may still be a neurotoxin. There's concerns about that surfacing in the MS community. So it's one I wouldn't consider as good of a food. Chlorella is algae and it is more of a reasonable food option. It may have some detoxification properties. So in terms of algae as a subset of sea vegetables, the chlorella itself, it does contain iodine. We do want to be mindful of iodine. It's not bad, but we want to consider reasonable amounts to not disrupt the thyroid. And you can do fine with chlorella up to about 3,000 milligrams per day, which is the same as three grams per day, and not get excessive iodine. And I say this only by seeing a lot of assays showing consistent amounts of iodine in chlorella. A lot of things that contain iodine have pretty erratic amounts. And in those cases, it's hard to say that this amount would be safe to eat because the content could vary tremendously. But chlorella has been pretty stable, not a lot of highs and lows that way. So no big drawbacks. So sea vegetables, we think about different types. And some of the big ones, you know, kelp always pops to mind soonest. That's called laminaria as far as the genus of that. Others include haziki, wakame, arame, dulse. Um, I think I said haziki and harame. <laughs> harame. Also, we'll see wakame as being one of those. So many forms that are typical. Nori, which is the main one that you'll see the sushi wraps or the sheets made out of. And the main thing it contributes to in the diet really is iodine. In fact, I'm going to share a couple images with you. This one is just showing the iodine content of many common types of sea vegetables. So laminaria, these are kelp species. Uh, Alaria, that's the arame I was talking about. Many different ones here. But if you look at most cases, you'll talk about serving size of being roughly one ounce. So whenever you see information about how much nutrient a food gives you, you got to think about that in terms of how much nutrient per practical serving size. So I'll see some serving sizes of sea vegetables that are talking about a gram serving or a tenth of a gram serving or even like 100 gram serving. And none of those are realistic. They're far above or far below what's typical. But in most cases, you're talking about an ounce or maybe a couple of ounces. But for an ounce intake, you can just see how the micrograms of iodine per serving correlate with recommended daily intakes. And this is not even getting into whether or not that recommended intake is appropriate for everyone, but we're looking at what, 163,000% of the RDA for an ounce of some types of kelp. And even at the bottom of this list, we're at 2,300% of the RDA for a small amount. So if we're not doing a lot of these foods, what are the nutrients we're missing out on? You know, what's the opportunity lost? What are the things that we would get from this that we wouldn't get elsewhere? Here's a nutrient breakdown for doles. Uh, and this one shows the iodine at 500%, which is still high. However, this is a smaller quantity. This is only a five gram serving or a one tablespoon serving. An ounce is roughly 28 grams. So if you were comparing this to the chart we saw before, this would put it at about 2,500 
times the RDA for iodine comparison purposes. However, if you look at the other nutrients, it does have eh, you know, a tenth of the day's need for a few nutrients, and then 3% for other nutrients. The ones that it has about a tenth of the day's need of, like vitamin C, manganese, vitamin A, copper, these are not nutri hard nutrients to find in a healthy diet. If you've got some plant foods of any type, or animal foods, or nuts or seeds, whatever it is, you can get those nutrients pretty readily. They're not hard ones to come across. Some of the ones on this list that are common ones to get low in, the biggest ones would really be iron and zinc. Those are tough ones to max out. And the sea vegetables are not really a rich source of those. They contain it, they have it, but not a lot. They're not going to move the needle if those are nutrients that you're low in. You would have to consume 33 ounces per day to get a reasonable serving of zinc or iron. And that's ridiculous. That would be way, way, way above. It's already way above any safe iodine level before you take 33 servings of that. So between that and then just the really high amounts of iodine in these, not a lot of essential nutrients that you wouldn't get elsewhere. So that's one, one big consideration in sorting out sea vegetables. Now, the other thought is that these are also commonly used as food additives. So you'll see carrageenan, um, alginate, sodium alginate, auger, or auger auger. <laughs> we love it so much we say it twice, I guess. But you'll see it written in both ways. But any of those are, co are commonly added to processed foods for texturizing purposes. And in doing so, that often ends up giving these foods really high amounts of iodine. Now, I've seen friends like Bonnie Harry, aka Food Babe, who've written a lot about carrageenan. And the biggest negative that I found about that is just that high, unstable amount of iodine. She's written how you can find that in many foods. So processed foods known to contain that can include things like ice cream, lunch meat. Sadly, a lot of non-dairy milks can have that. Baby formulas, whipped cream, a lot of chocolate, chocolate products, syrups, creamers, and more. So because of the presence of carrageenan, these foods can have just whopping amounts of iodine and unstable amounts. I've seen assays of sherbet that can have as much as uh, 1,100 micrograms of iodine per serving, and that's mostly from the texturizers. So some other thoughts. There's been talk about sea vegetables being dangerous due to their radiation content. You know, I don't find that a compelling argument either way. There's a limited amount of data saying that in terms of Geiger counter readings, many versions are high in radiation. It's not a consistent finding. And it was thought to be a concern after Fukushima, but we're not sure if it really has spread, if it's global, if it's localized. It seems to not be as clear of an issue. So I wouldn't consider that a strong argument against sea vegetables, even though that has been talked about. The main thing is just the fact that they've got so dang much iodine, you can't really consume them without overloading. And they do have other nutrients, but the nutrients they have are ones you can pretty easily get elsewhere. You're not really gonna get low in them. So action steps to think about, they're not mandatory in the diet. And with thyroid disease, you're better off avoiding sea vegetables and their derivatives. The exception would be chlorella. There can be some health detoxification benefits from it. It does contain iodine to a moderate degree, but it generally does have stable levels. However, those same detox benefits you can also obtain via rice bran or spinach or other sources of chlorophyll like that and with similar effects. So main action steps there and overall better to avoid minimize, especially to minimize the versions found in processed foods and otherwise that's it. <laughs> Dr. C here with you. Take good care. I'll see you real soon. Bye-bye.